scientific knowledge has skyrocketed. As, as an example, this graph shows the number of papers published each year in the nanocarbon field. I often use these examples because I am conducting research on applied nanocarbon research with my fellow researchers, Abun Shifugetsu. Currently, uh, we focus on the researches of high performance of fiber capacitors. So let's return to the main subject. The, uh, these pictures, uh, the to total number of published articles of this field has reached 500,000 papers. So uh, ex expectations for solving social challenges and acad with academic knowledge are also expanding. We believe that nanocarbon technologies are one of the promising approaches for achieving the goals of sustainable and well-aging societies. Nanocarbons such as graphene, carbon nanotube, and fluorent, due to their remarkable electrical and mechanical properties and their unique morphologies, appear suitable for a wide, wide variety of applications. Our analysis, this, this picture shows using dynamic topic, topic modeling identifies that the fields of its applications include a catalysis, batteries, biosensors, nanocomposites, drug deliveries, solar cells, water or air purifications, and supercapacitor. Historically, the review of knowledge domains and technological forecasting have been handled by domain experts such as by the so-called Delphi method initiated by the Land Corporation of the United States in the 1950s. These are known as the social or expert-based approach. However, the rapid increase in the amount of knowledge, the significant challenge in the structure of knowledge domain, and the uh, knowledge fragmentation have revealed the limits of the such expert-based approach. Therefore, as a complement to the expert-based approach, there is an increasing expectation for our, comp our computer-based approach. The computer-based approach have several advantages. Specifically, it can cope with a quantitative increase in the number of objects to be analyzed. It doesn't take time to analyze and the objectivity of the result. This figure shows the basic concept of the, our computer-based approach. By using this approach, we can identify knowledge structures, relevance between knowledge domains, the emerging research front, and the trend of research. The first step starts with the collection of the necessary information, which is collectively referred to, uh, to as the corpus of the knowledge. Conversely, to determine the scope of the corpus, generally expertise for targeted domain is required. The next step is analyze the result of which are utilized to perform the organized step. I analyze, in analyzing and organizing, it is important to select a suitable method for the purpose of which the results are used from various options. The final step is visualizations, which can be seen as a bridge between those who provide the analysis service and those who utilize this result. The biggest feature of our approach is the emphasis on the paper citation network. Our approach leverages the author's bottom-up intentions to cite other closely related papers as key information. By grouping papers like this with close citation relationship, it is possible to identify the knowledge structure of the domain. In contrast, major database folders like Elsevier emphasize the top-down category approach. It can be said that there is a complementary relationship with them. 
especially in emerging areas where there is no defined, no top-down category approach, our bottom-up approach has an advantage. We have developed a web system that implements the four steps described before. The, the main users of the systems are the domain experts in the technology area to be analyzed. This system can be used by researchers and staffs who are not familiar with the data science. So uh, let's move on to the cases of our analysis. The first example is a study that used this web system to grasp the overall picture of a cross-disciplinary research field. In recent years, there, there has been a growing global interest in sustainability and the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, advocated by the United Nations. Scientific research could play an important role in the achievement of a sustainable society. However, to grasp the trend of sustainability research is difficult because each academic activity is not determined in a top-down manner from goals such as the SDGs. To understand this bottom-up research activities, we analyze over 270,000 publications that have addressed sustainability by citation network analysis and national language processing. These results suggest that dynamic changes have occurred in sustainability research over the last few years. Several topics such as green chemistry, nanocellulose, and smart cities, universal health coverage, our metabolism. So these uh, areas are beginning to attract large amount of scientific attention. When recursive clustering is performed and subclusters are identified, it can be seen that in the emerging clusters, there exist many electrochemical groups which this academic community has been contributed significantly. We further observe the relationship between sustainability research and uh, sustainability research subjects and SDGs. And then we found the significant correspondence between some research subjects and specific goals of SDGs. This picture shows the linguistic similarity between each SDG and the academic clusters. We found that some research clusters correspond to specific SDGs. For example, cluster six, uh, this one, this line, that is electrochemical is strongly related to goal seven, affordable and clean energies, and is also related to goal nine. And uh, goal nine is the industry and innovation, infra innovation and infrastructure, and re also related to goal 12, uh, responsible consumption and production. By doing this analysis, we can obje objectively find out the relationship between our research area and SDGs or sustainability. So uh, let's move on to the second case. This is uh, about predicting the direction of growth in the nanocarbon research. As competition, for, as competition for research and development intensifies, it is important to find promising technological seeds and issues ahead of other companies or our research institutes. To this end, it is necessary to foresee the future of science and technology. 
to predict the future of the science and technology. It is important to comprehend trends in academic fields and to detect cutting edge areas. Previous method cannot detect the growth direction of the whole network. Therefore, a richer representation of the network structure is necessary to grasp the network growth direction. As an upgraded research achievement of the data-driven approaches, we have established a novel framework which is capable of forecasting the trend as the growing direction of paper citations via network representation learning, NRL. Recently, this approach, NRL, which calculates a high-dimensional vector representation of, of a network, has received much attention. The position of nodes in high-dimensional latent space include rich information because the high-dimensional vector representation enables us to use the precision task of clustering, level estimations, and visualization. We show the representation of vector calculated using line in two dimensions space by PCA. Here, we use the uh, nanocarbon data set again to identify the direction of the growth of the citation network. Papers in, the, in our scope are divided into three groups, those published in 2014, the nearest, newest year in the data set, and those from 2011 to 2013, and those before 2010. As shown in the figure, papers published in 2014, that is the orange one, are mapped on the bottom left side for comparison with other old papers. These results signify that, signify that the growth direction of academic fields can be identified using this kind of a latent representation of networks. We train a regression model that fits each paper's latent vector obtained by NRL to each paper's publication time. The model would grasp the growth direction of the citation network. Subsequently, we estimate each paper's intrinsic publication year, IPI, not real publish, publish, publication year, intrinsic publication year, IPI, by fitting the regression model to each paper's latent vector. Therefore, IPI, this indicator represents the degree of trend following each paper. Papers that have a high IPI or a young IPI value are inferred to be located on the cutting edge. Verifying the validity of the information extracted by the framework, we confirm that this indicator IPI is useful for predicting the future citation count and the future frequently used words in the domain. We demonstrate the relations between IPI and the number of future citations. As for the nanocarbon data set, we show the distribution of IPI between three groups in the figure. So first is the zero citations, this one, and uh, top 10%, this one, and uh, uh, and other papers. The top 10% citation group takes the highest IPA, IPI values. Zero citation groups takes the lowest value in their result, in a result. This tendency is observed for the data set of other research fields, such as APS or uh, solar cell. This results demonstrate that 
the high citation papers is likely to follow the trend. This figure shows that the more than 30 or 40 papers having high or young, young IPI value are future top 10% cited papers. So uh, in this respect, we are not arguing that the research at the front with young IPI is excellent. So just we estimate that the uh, high, uh, the papers having high IPI value are future top 10% cited, cited papers. The furthermore, a word frequently used in the abstract of cutting edge papers, that is a young IPI paper, is likely to be used often in the future publications. For the nanocarbon case, we use the 2013 data set and extracted frequent used keywords from the new IPI papers. As a result, in relation to material or methodology issues, nanocarbon network, graphene nanosheet, graphene electroid, graphene rich catalysis are frequently used keywords. As for the applications, lithium ion batteries, supercapacitor, magnetic absorption are frequently used, used keywords we detected. By such means, it is possible to grasp the characteristics of the cutting edge researches in units of keyword. The keywords of our two most recently published papers are the nanocarbon network and supercapacitor. Our researches are on the trend that can be grasped as of 2013, that, uh, that is uh, seven years ago. Although our researches have the additional features, that is nano-nano combination of organic and inorganic materials, we have to say that our research is also on a bandwagon. These techniques are useful for planning and evaluating innovations. For example, it is possible to get a comprehensive understanding of previous research and to know gr growing application field. It is also possible to identify fields that can make use of strengths in laboratories and companies. Finally, I would like to talk a little bit ab about our future plans. We plan to carry out representation learning on three types of elements, that is text, citation and metadata, and try to use and integrate them in various precision tasks. Advanced materials are the knowledge domains that can make a great contribution to the future society of us and mankind. I would like to contribute to the, this community by developing new such methods to support cutting edge innovation activities in this area.